you guys and welcome back to my channel it has been forever i have not done a video in like two weeks um i've been super super busy currently i have my etsy shop um not taking any orders at the moment but i will start taking orders again on may 9th so if you're watching this and you've gone to my etsy shop or you notice that it's um says i'm on a break i'm actually not on a break what i'm doing is i am working on all the current orders that i have but i'm also working on a bunch of ready to ship stuff so my goal is going to be to transition my shop into a more ready to ship instead of a made to order in the beginning i couldn't do that because i couldn't i didn't want to stock an inventory um that i didn't know if people were going to buy it and so now that i feel comfortable and confident that i'll be able to sell the items i feel like it's time for me to convert it to a more ready to ship shop so in order to do that i have to stop the orders so that i have time to create the ready to ship products to be able to sell them ready to ship so that is why i'm not taking orders for the next couple of days but don't worry i will be back and the shipping times will be faster and you will get your things faster and um you will also you can also still do custom orders so if you want custom orders if you're somebody that buys from me and i make specific things for you that's still an option i'm still going to be doing that that is why i'm not taking orders if any of you guys have stopped by my shop but in this video today i wanted to do a tutorial that incorporated my entire channel as opposed to just um the people that sew I love my sewers, um, but I also want to do things for people who don't sew. I want to give you guys an option to make a honeycomb hammock for your ferrets that does not require a sewing machine. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, it's going to look like this, although this is not a great depiction because it's hard to hold a honeycomb ham hammock up by yourself. But I'm going to go put it in my cage so you guys can see it. And then we're going to make it. And I'll show you guys how I did that and how you can do that too. And if okay. So for this tutorial, you're going to want to have, um, let's see, you're going to need a ruler. You're going to need some clips or some pins. You could even use safety pins. So if you don't have sewing supplies, because this is a no sew tutorial, you can completely use safety pins. I do recommend that you pin or clip or hold these pieces together when you do this, or it may be a little difficult. You're going to want to get, um, you're going to need a pair of scissors, something to write with something sharp to poke a hole in your fabric with whether that's i think scissors would probably be best um and then you're gonna need some fleece so you can get fleece really cheap you can get these throw blankets from walmart and they're like three dollars you can get fleece from the craft store like joann's you can get fleece from the dollar store they have like little baby blankets that are fleeced or you could use an old blanket at your house you could do this with something else soft like maybe um a towel or a t an old t-shirt and a towel the combination of both you have a lot of options as far as what you want to use for your material so the other thing you're going to need i'm making i cut two pieces of fabric um i am using fleece on both sides and i cut a 16 by 16 inch square in solid and a 16 by inch 16 inch square in a pattern piece you can use all solids how you design it is completely up to you so i have two 16 by 16 pieces and with those pieces i have four strips of fleece you can use four strips of fabric again this is up to you they're an inch wide and they measure 20 inches long and i have four of them and this is going to be how we're going to connect the sides so um, what I'm doing is with my honeycombs, I typically make my top and bottom piece two inches apart. So my bottom will be 16 inches and my top will be 14. You could do something like 10 inches for the top and 12 inches for the bottom or 14 inches for the bottom and 12 inches for the top. You got lots of options. The size is up to you as well. But what I did was I cut my strips, um, four inches longer than whatever my size is. So this is 16 by 16 and my strips are 20 inches by 20, 20 inches by an inch wide. Okay, so that's gonna be my bottom part of my honeycomb. My top is gonna be 14 by 14. The other thing you're gonna need at the end when you are finished and you wanna hang it is something to hang with. These are shower curtain hooks. Um, you can get these at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon. I'll put a link to the ones from Amazon. You can get them like to 12 pack for like three bucks. Or you can go to Walmart into the home improvement section and get little carabiners to hang your hammocks as well. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with my bigger piece. It doesn't matter which piece you start with. So I'm gonna set my smaller piece aside. So what you wanna do 
is you want to take your squares and if you are using fleece or anything really it normally will have a right side so for me the right side is more fluffy or brighter it when i'm in this is anti-pill fleece so it's it's brighter and what i want to do is i want to flip it so i want the wrong sides facing together the good sides i want to be facing out for the front and the back you want to line them up and you want to make sure they're all the, all the edges are lined up really well and then once you do that you're going to clip these in place just clip them or pin them together with the safety pin something do you want to keep the pieces together what you want to do is um you want to you're gonna have to put holes every inch and a half or so you can honestly just gauge this with your eyes it's it's not a doesn't have to be a precise science what you need to do now is um you're gonna get one of your strips and you're going to get something sharp and i'm going to start in one of my corners and what i want to do is I want to put a hole about maybe a, we'll say a, an inch in. I would do it about an inch in. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to, these are really sharp, and I'm going to just cut until I poke all the way through. If you're um, a child and you're doing this tutorial, please have a parent help you. Um, if you're an adult, please don't cut your hands. If you guys can see my scissors are through there. So now you have this hole in your fabric. You're going to want to take your strip you're going to put it through the hole. So once you get it through the hole, you're going to want to leave about two inches loose here. And then you're going to go over and you're going to poke a hole on the side about an inch over. I'm just going to kind of eye this. And you want to come in about a half an inch because if you don't, you're going to poke a hole too close to the, to the side of the fabric and it's going to rip especially if you're using like a t-shirt or flannel or something like that. Not a big hole, just enough to hold this, to slide your fabric through. And we're gonna put our fabric up from the bottom. Okay, so now you have this. And then you're gonna poke a hole about an inch away. And then you wanna come up from the bottom again. So continue to come up from the bottom or whichever way, if you go from the top, whatever you do, keep the same motion. So I'm gonna keep going from the bottom. You should start looking like this. And then you're gonna poke another hole again, about in the same space away. So keep them spaced out the same. You're gonna come up from the bottom again, and you're gonna do this until you reach the end. Okay, so now that you've done that, you should have your it should kind of look like this on the other side. And then you're going to go right to this corner. You're going to poke the hole just like you did on this corner. Put your piece through. And then leave it untied. Don't do anything with it. So you've got two ends right here. And it looks like this. You're going to grab your next piece. And you're going to go down the side. But here's the trick. You need to put this piece through the same hole. So you're going to have two pieces in each corner. So we're just going to pull that through about the same. So you have two of these. Just leave it like it is for right now. And then you're going to go down and do the same thing. And you're going to do this around all four sides until you've attached all of these pieces. So now that you've done that, you should have something that looks like this on. And it should... You don't, don't do anything with your ties yet. Just sit this piece aside. We're going to come back to this. Now you're going to want to take your smaller piece and do the same exact thing. Okay, so now that you've done your edges and your sides, you should have two squares that are two different sizes. Um, I have not tied the corners yet. So I'm going to start with my larger square. And this is going to be the outside, the part that my ferrets don't lay on. I'm going to put my larger square down first with the... Um, side that my ferrets are going to lay on facing me and the outside facing down. I'm going to take my smaller square and I'm going to do the same thing. So whatever side I don't want them to lay on is going to face me and the outside is going to face down. And you're going to lay this one opposite. So you kind of want a caddy corner. Basically you want to line the points of your larger square up with the sides of your smaller square, your smaller hammock. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you center this. So Let's say there's about three inches from this point to the to the side. You want there to be three inches from that point to the side on all four corners, all the way around. 
don't have it so it's bigger because that'll cause your hammock to be lopsided. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you can get it. So once you've done that, um, we'll be ready to attach it. So now we have to attach the two hammocks together to create the honeycomb. You also want the points of your smaller hammock to be centered with the sides of your larger hammock. And just so I, just to mention this, you're gonna be hanging it from the smaller hammock. Now, first what you're gonna to wanna to do is take these ties on your larger hammock and just tie them in a knot, a real tight knot so they don't come loose. Do that on all four corners, just so that you tie this in place. And that, that way you know your big hammock is gonna to stay together the way you want. Okay, so to attach this, you wanna take this and you need to attach it here. So if you need to poke an extra hole, that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I wanna put a hole here, if you notice it's kind of a big space, and I'm gonna put one of these ties through that hole. Um, and we're gonna tie, cause it's gotta be centered. If you if you happen to put holes in your smaller hammock in a spot where, you do, where there's already a hole centered and you don't need to do that, then don't do that, don't add an extra hole. I'm gonna take one of my, my ties, one of my little wing guys on my corner, and I'm gonna put it through that hole. All right, so now I have one tie through the hole and one tie is not. I'm gonna take the other tie and I'm gonna put it through this hole that happens to be next to it. Basically, you need to just create, um, we're not putting it through the same hole. We're actually gonna put it through the holes next to each other so that you should have them, the ties in two separate holes. So it should look like this. What I wanna do now is I wanna take those two ties and I'm gonna tie them in a knot. And you're gonna to wanna to tie this pretty tight and probably double knot it because your babies are gonna be laying on this. And if they're like my ferrets, they lay on the bottom and not on the top of the honeycomb. I'm not sure why. So I'm tying this really tight a couple of times and I'll cut off the excess. Um, I'll cut off these excess strings when I'm done, but I wanna wait till I'm done. Okay, so that's one side. So then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna do something similar. You're gonna do this to all four sides. Okay, so now that you have tied the um, corners of your large hammock to your smaller hammock, you should have something that looks like this. It's hard to hold up a honeycomb hammock yourself, but basically it should look like this all the way around. You can kind of see the honeycomb shape. Okay, so now before you do anything else, you're gonna wanna take where you just tied on the corners of the larger hammock and just cut that excess fabric off the sides. Do not cut anything off the smaller hammock. Just cut the excess fabric from the side pieces you just tied. So now what you should have left is the corners on the smaller hammock. You're gonna wanna tie those in a knot. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take your hanging hooks and slide them through at the end. I'm probably just gonna leave this like this and then what I'll end up doing is opening this up and you can slide it in. But if you have these ties here, you can kind of create a circle to put it in. So don't pull down when you tie, just create like a little hoop. So if you create kind of like a circle like this and then you can slide on your hook and we're going to hang it from our cage. Let's go test it out in the ferret cage.